Welcome to the tutorial video on Twine 2.3. In this video, I'm going to talk about arrays in Harlow 3. In programming terminology, an array is an ordered sequence of values within a single variable. In Harlow, arrays are created using either the array macro or its shortcut, A. Arrays are ordered, which means that the order of the values within them matters. Whenever they are created, that initial order is the order of the values, and they are ordered in that sequence. We can see here an example. The order of the values is A, B, and C. And this will make a little more sense when we look at the code. To access an entry within an array, its position needs to be known. In Harlow, this is done through the possessive apostrophe. Think of it as the value at an array's position. Notice array's position, the possessive apostrophe, so array's position. It's also important to remember that arrays start their positions at 1 in Harlow. This is different than a lot of other programming environments. Some of them start at 0. In Harlow, arrays start at 1. So the very first position is the first value, the second position is the second value, and onward. In this case, we see the second value is 2. And that, of course, will make a little more sense when we look at the code momentarily. Finally, there are many different ways to work with arrays in Harlow. Many different ways. The most common operation is to test if a value is within an array. To do that, Harlow supplies a few different keywords, contains and is in. The difference between these is similar to the difference between set and put macros. That is, it's in the wording and how the author wants to construct the wording. The result is the same, but the wording can be different depending on the outcome, depending on how the person wants to compose these. For contains, the wording is if an array contains a value. For is in, the wording runs the reverse. The test is if a value is in an array. So for contains, an array contains a value. For is in, if a value is in an array. And this will make a little more sense when we look at the code. So let's go look at the code finally. Jumping back over here, let's look at creating arrays. As we see here, we can create a new array using the array macro. Notice I'm using the shortcut here of the A. I mentioned it's an ordered sequence of values. They're separated by commas here. So we see A, B, and C. This is the order they are created in, A, B, and C. And when we ran this, we saw that exact order echoed back to us, A, B, and C. I'm also using the set macro here because I want to save the result of this expression. So I'm creating a new array and I'm saving that array in this story variable new array using the set macro in combination with the array macro. Creating an array and saving it so I can later access it. And I'm accessing immediately right after this and we saw when we put the array within the text of the passage we saw its exact order echoed back A, B, and C. I mentioned when we're accessing different entries in the array, we're using the possessive apostrophe, so an array's position. Notice here I'm creating a new array again, the same construction before, using the array macro in combination with the set macro. We're creating an array, we're saving that array, it's an ordered sequence of values that we're now saving within this variable, the single variable. So the single variable new array is an array containing the order sequence of values 1, 2, 3, and 4. Again, arrays are ordered sequence of values. And arrays also start at position 1. And I mention that because it's very important for this next step. So if we want the second value, the second position, we can do that using the possessive apostrophe I mentioned. And we see that right here. New arrays and within parentheses after that, the position we want. Harley provides named positions. For example, if we wanted the first or the second, it would be 1st or 2nd for first and second. Or if we want to supply a number, we can do that using parentheses after that. So right here in combination, possessive apostrophes position, the array's position. And as I mentioned up here, the value at an array's position is a good way to think about that. So we want the temporary variable second to be set to the value at an array's position. The array's position is two. And this is the second position. Two, it's also the second value. Remember, 
Harlow starts its arrays at 1. The first value would have been 1, the second is 2, so we ask it for the second value in order is 2, and if we run this, we will see that is 2. So Harlow arrays start at 1, and we're looking for the, using the possessive apostrophe or the value at an array's position to get an individual position within an ordered sequence of values that is an array. Finally, we can test different things. And as I mentioned, Harley provides two different ways to do that. We can use the contains keyword or the is in keyword pairing. And it just depends on what wording we want to use. As I mentioned, if we want to test if a variable contains a value, we use the contains keyword. And notice it runs across here, if inventory contains cape. Or we can use the is in as a reverse of that, if value is in variable. So two different ways to go about testing if some, something is, is in a variable or if a variable contains a value. Two different ways to approach that. And notice I've set up an example here. Again, creating an array, this time with helmet, gloves, and ring, saving that to inventory, then immediately testing that. If inventory contains cape, and it does not, so we come down here to the else, no cape in the inventory, come down here, if cape is in inventory, and it does not, it defaults to else, and we see no cape in inventory. And if we run this in the bug, we see the same results again. So we tested if variable contains value, then we tested to see if value is in variable. And in both cases, the result was the same, but the wording, like with set and put, just helps authors and how they're constructing tests here, using the if macro and else macros in these cases. So as I reviewed in this video, we can create arrays within Harlow using either the array macro or the a shortcut macro. Arrays, as a review, are an ordered sequence of values. Whenever they are created, that's their order. And we do that using commas between their values. Then, once the array is created, we can access different elements within it, different entries within it. And we do that using the possessive apostrophe, the value at an array's position. And we can use, in Harlow, named position, first, second, third, etc., or within parentheses, we can give it the position we want. In this example, we looked at two. And we always remember, Harlow starts its arrays at one, not at zero. So the first value is the first value, the second one is the second one, and so on. Finally, we can test to see what's in an array using either contains or is in, depending on how we want to write things. We can test if a variable contains a value or if a value is in a variable. Thanks for watching.